In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the front screen on the iPhone 15. I'm going to start off placing it face down on the heat mat. This one's set to 85 degrees C and it's going to sit there for the next three to four minutes. This screen's absolutely destroyed on it, so let's be real, it doesn't matter if it gets more broken as we're removing it. Whilst that's getting warm, I'm going to take a pentalogue screwdriver and I'll remove the two bottom screws either side of the USB-C port at the bottom of the phone. It's clear that you can identify the iPhone 15 from the iPhone 13. This one has a USB-C port as opposed to a lightning port. <laughs> Once it's had a few minutes on the heat mat, we're going to get a half a Dorco blade like this one, and we're going to insert it between the edge of the screen and the edge of the chassis to start making a gap. It's a good idea to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol at this point and just squirt it down the side of that Dorco blade so that it's just going to soften up that adhesive a little bit more. We'll start putting pressure on the Dorco blade and sort of pulling it back now. The seals on these are pretty tough and it might snap the blade off just like that. It's always good to have an extra Dorco blade handy, especially like in this case when the phone's not hot enough. Because it's quite broken, I'm actually going to use a, a standard razor blade, single-sided one, and I'm just going to make that gap a little bit bigger. Insert it in that gap like that, pull it back, and it's just a little bit more rigid to create that gap, which I'm not worried about breaking the screen more, as I said before. This is a relatively simple repair, owing to the fact that it's only the screen what comes off from the front. If you want to do any other work on this phone, it comes off from the back. I'll add isopropyl alcohol whenever it gets a little tough to remove. But you can see that the screen's separating now. And then finally, just this top area to remove. It helps to sort of pry this away from the top because it is clipped in. And they always are a little bit awkward to remove from there. You want to take care as well because obviously there is a small flex that we need to keep just here however if that flex gets damaged it's not the end of the world just remember that it opens up right to left like that now let's get on the workbench to get it took apart it's always a good idea to put a little prop behind the screen so that it doesn't fall over and damage that cable a mug is a really good option for this especially an eye doctor one now that we're into the device we're going to take a tri-wing screwdriver and remove just this screw here. Because this is an OLED driven device, so the screen is powered differently to the LCD devices, there's no big risk of blowing out a backlight circuit. So don't worry too much about having to remove the back, disconnecting the battery. Ideally, the phone will be turned off before you carry on with the repair. But if you can't turn it off, don't worry too much about it. These will install hot and is very, very little risk of doing any damage whilst ensuring the screen hot. Remove this shield just here. Now we'll move up to the top flex up here, which we'll use the tri-wing screwdriver again to remove that. Keep the screw safe for later. Use your tweezers to remove that shield. It's on a little hinge thing, so it can be a little awkward. And then save it. And then use the plastic stick to disconnect this flex. Same rules apply as I said before. And then for the screen, we don't even need to use the plastic stick because we can just sort of hold it with our thumb and pull it up to disconnect it. We'll put the chassis to one side now and we're just going to concentrate on removing this flex cable for the front sensor. If you've bought a genuine part from Apple, then this will have the sensor pre-installed. However, on this occasion, our customer chose to have a aftermarket screen fitted. So we're going to transfer this front flex cable over to the new screen. It's held down by one crosshead screw and this small shield that we'll remove with our tweezers. I'm going to use a heat gun set at 200 degrees C. However, you can use a hairdryer to achieve the same effect. And the basics is that we're going to warm up this area, softening the adhesive that holds it down so that it's a lot easier to remove without breaking it. There is an important sensor on this flex cable that we don't want to damage because if you do, you may render the face ID useless. Use alcohol around the edge of the flex and then use the flat edge of the pr plastic prying tool or the spudger to get underneath it. And you're gonna slowly work your way underneath it to release this flex cable. This is nice and warm 
and easy to get out. For this sensor up here, the small square one, we're going to use some sharp tweezers and just pry it out very carefully so that we can get it out like that. And then the whole flex comes off just like that. So let's keep this safe for later. This screen's destroyed, so we're going to chuck it in the bin, but not before we try and copy the True Tone data. Now we're going to connect the screen up to the JCV1S while we attach it down at the bottom. And it should read the screen data, which we can just copy onto the JCV1SE, and then we'll get out our new screen. This is an aftermarket soft OLED display that we get from iPods for you. I think these come in at about 130, 140 pounds for the pot, and it comes with the seal. They usually have a little tag on that you can attach onto there, but I can't see it with this one if you wanted to swap over the screen chip. But in this case, we're not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to transfer the True Tone. It's important to note that when we transfer the True Tone, this will not get rid of the battery message, and that's written onto there now. Swapping over the True Tone won't get rid of the unknown part warning. However, it will maintain all functionality after the repair. Now we can reinstall that flex cable, starting off with the sensor into the little square hole, and then line up the flex cable and sit it down just there. Now we can reinstall that little shield onto the back of the screen. Just make sure that it's tucked into the little hinge on there. Then we can re-secure it down with that single crosshead screw. We can put the screen to one side now, and then we're gonna have a look at the chassis of the phone. And what we need to do is make sure that all the old adhesive seal is removed from this one. This can be an awkward and tedious job. It is made a little bit easier if you use one of these little X-Acto blade, uh, X-Acto blades on there. You're just gonna get in that gap and remove as much of the adhesive as you possibly can. I just noticed that that little blade doesn't quite fit in the gap between the in the chassis, so I'm just proceeding to pull out as much of that adhesive as I possibly can, which once I've got a decent grip on it, it seems to pull off pretty easily. Now that all the adhesive's removed, we're gonna take a stiff brush and just clean off those edges. You can add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol onto there as well. Get as much of the dust and gunk that's left behind removed. Like I said before, the screens do come with a new adhesive seal. Just make sure that you install it the right way around. Obviously the top of it has got a little indentation for the ear speaker on there. Line it up along the left hand edge and then the rest of it should follow if you've got it lined up properly. Then I always use the back edge of my tweezers just to push it down a little bit more and make sure that it's right into the little groove on there. Be careful at the top of course because you've got important components for the camera, infrared sensor and face ID sensor and then peel off the very top film what's left behind. You'll see that it's left behind another blue film. We'll remove that once the screen is reinstalled. I've got this nice little car detailing brush that we remove all the dust and stuff from inside. And then we can just line up our new screen. There is a little film on the back of this one I didn't notice before, so I'm gonna peel that off as well. So now we'll just offer up the screen with the display cable first of all line it up and apply pressure until it clicks into place then we can guide the shield in with the tweezers making sure that it goes under the little catch or hinge followed by the one tri-wing screw that holds it down let's move up to the top now and repeat the same with this top flex cable line it up apply pressure once it's lined up and reconnects we can then thread that one under the little catch for that. And then finally reinstall that last tri-wing screw. At this point, it's a good idea to test that the new display works before peeling off the last of the seal. We're gonna line up the top, making sure that it secures down. And then with pressure held at the top, we're just gonna squeeze on these edges on the left edge first, then the right edge making sure that it secures down. And then finally, reinstalling the two pantalope screws back into the bottom of the phone. Make sure these are screwed in nice and tight.
That just looks a bit crusty at the bottom, so we'll just brush that out a little bit. Now we can peel off the film on the top, and this phone will turn on now, and that just about completes this guide on how to replace the front screen on the iPhone 15. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.